pray and we'll get started. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you tonight just for the privilege and opportunity to come and to just study the word. We thank you for the spirit of God being here to offer insight and revelation of the word into mm -hmm. our lives. And we just give you praise, Father, and glory for all that you're going to reveal to us, even as we continue to study on faith. And so we thank you, we honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are um, sharing with you on Faith Activated, praise God. Everybody got their hand out. So, uh, so let's just start. Let's just, uh, we'll go talk about faith a little, a little bit, just to kind of rehearse and go over what we've talked about before. We said that faith begins where the will of God is known. All right, so there, you cannot have faith until you know what God has said. All right, so it's important that you have a relationship with him where you spend some time with him mm -hmm. to know what he, 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 he has said about whatever you're endeavoring to do. Um, the second thing is faith activates when we move in obedience to the word. Just because God says something, that doesn't automatically make it, make it happen. You've got to get in agreement with what he has said and moving as he says. That's when your, your faith activates his promise. Uh, then the third thing is faith manifests when we complete what the Father commands. Mm -hmm. Not just getting in the race, <laughs> not just going half of the race, but it's finishing the race that he set before you. And so, so remember, faith begins, then faith activates, and then faith manifests. Those three things are always necessary for faith. And faith always starts with the Word of God and what God reveals to you and what he says. So you've got to know what God is saying. At all, and that's why I, I encourage you guys to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. As you spend time in His presence, talk to Him, uh, to converse with Him. Not where you're doing all the talking, but that you have a lot. Take some time to sit back and let Him talk back. And He doesn't always talk, you know, some audible voice. But sometimes you get unctions in your spirit about things you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, and usually He'll tell you to do things that will, that is for the betterment of your life. But in the betterment for your life, it always brings glory to Him. Amen. He never does it just to exalt you. He does it to exalt Himself Amen. through you. Amen. That's important because a lot of people get involved in things that they don't exalt Him. You know, I, I'll probably teach this Saturday, but God was just, I was sitting in my office today, and God just dropped two words in my spirit. <laughs> Holy ambitions. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and, I, and I, it just... Stopped me, and I, you know, and I just, you know, just pondered it for a minute, and I thought about, you know, holy ambitions, and then I thought about how many people have ambitions, but a lot of their ambitions are not holy ambitions, mm -hmm. and so what makes for a holy ambition? Well, that's what we'll talk about Saturday, about how do you look at your ambitions and know whether or not they're really of God or they're really of the flesh. See, God can give you, an, I mean, Satan can give you an ambition too, mm -hmm. and get you moving to where your whole goal is to exalt yourself. But Christians have a tendency that when they have ambitions that are not of God make, God's making, they like to slap Jesus on it mm -hmm. to justify what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at how do you gauge that? How do you actually gauge holy ambitions and, and the ambitions you have towards certain things? And so we'll, we'll, we'll do that, sir. So come, sir, if you want to catch up on that. This is... Uh, now listen, in the manifest, faith manifests when we complete what the Father commands. This is, now listen to this. The manifestation of the promise may not be completely seen in your lifetime. True. And so there are certain things that God will tell you about maybe your children, um, you know, about what their life will be like. You, you may go to your grave never seeing it manifest in their life, but always leave, this is, even when we leave this world, our faith should remain. Amen. Abraham didn't get to see all that God promised him. But he counted God faithful. Mm -hmm. All he got to see was Isaac. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he didn't see uh, his, his descendants being like the sands of the sea and not being able to be numbered. He didn't get to see that. But he went to his grave believing that mm -hmm. God would do what God promised him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now there are three things we must know in order for faith to be activated effectively. Come on, say, everybody, everybody say effectively. Effectively. So we want effective faith, not just people slapping, but effective faith. Number one, we have to know, what has God said? What has he said? What has he spoken to your heart? That's the first thing you got to know, what has God said? Number two, we got to know, when has God said to move on what he spoke? You know, you can, it's not enough to know what God said, but you got to know when to move. Because if you don't know when to move, you could get ahead of God. 
And we see that in, throughout the Bible where men got ahead of God. Moses got ahead of God. Amen. Went and killed the Egyptian because he saw him abusing one of his brothers. He, no, he was trying to deliver, but what was he going to do? Kill one Egyptian at a time? I mean, he got ahead of the game. He got ahead of God. Even though he was a deliverer and he was trying to deliver, he was doing it at the wrong time. Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Jesus got ahead. <laughs> at 12, remember the family? They went down to, to, to do that. The, 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 that's the custom was to, to, to do what they did. And he stayed behind. They thought he was with family members in their uh, little group and found out he wasn't there. They had to spend, they, they had to backtrack three days and find him. Found him in the temple. Mm -hmm. He's like, y'all didn't you know I'd be in my father's house about my father's business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're 12. <laughs> <laughs> and mama said, yeah, that's great and all, son. And I know you must have, but don't you do that no more. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he went back and submitted to his parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so even Jesus got ahead. Amen. And so, so you don't want to get ahead of God. Amen. As a, as a timing is it, timing is crucial. And so many times we, we, we get anxious, don't we? we? God speak a word, we want to see it all happen overnight. No? See, see, the process, the timing and the process is supposed to develop your character. You can have gifts, but you may not have character that supports your gift. Mm. Mm. Come on, amen. How many, people, how many people have great gifts, but, and, and they can get exalted to great places, but because they have no real character... They don't remain in the place that the gift got them to. Sweet. And then they end up falling. I, I wonder, like, man, what is Christian at? Man, I know that was a great song they put out. Man, what, I wonder where they are. And I, I go back and you know, know where is so-and-so, so-and-so found. So-and-so got caught up in an illicit affair. And all. This crazy happened to them. See, you, you got to be careful that, you're, that, you're, that the timing is crucial because it helps you develop your character towards God. That's why waiting is a good thing. Because waiting reveals you. <laughs> it reveals your impatience. It reveals your trust. It reveals uh, how much you love him. You know, so, so, it, it, so be mindful of that. That even though God speaks a thing, don't just jump out there and do it. Ask, okay, now when do I need to step out? And one of the things I found that God will do that is awesome, that's amazing, that God will he'll start connecting you with people. It's like giving you favor with people. People just want to help you, praise God. Mm -hmm. And not with strings attached. Mm -hmm. They just help you because it's, it's, they're, they're drawn to help you. That's another way you know. I mean, God's opening up doors of opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's another way you know it's God, His timing. He's, he, there, there's a lot of ways He'll do it, but I'm just saying, be in tune with Him. You know, so that you don't get ahead of Him. Amen. Don't become impatient because it's not happening. You know? The Bible says you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God then you, will, you might receive the promise. All right, the third thing we need to know in order for faith to be activated effectively, we must know what has God said is the purpose, goal, or promise. Come on, amen. Mm -hmm. See, many people have great dreams saved from God, but, but then when you ask, well, what, what, what is God's intent or reasoning for this? Because he's not going to give you anything without a purpose. Where well, there is no vision. What's a vision? The revealed word and will of God. He said, without... Where there is no vision, the people perish. Another translation says, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints. Mm -hmm. In other words, sin runs amok in people who don't have a purpose. You can have a gift, you can have a talent, but you might have, if you don't have a God purpose, see the God purpose is what restrains you. And be careful because one of the greatest enemies that a lot of Christians face today is success. It's not mm -hmm. failure, it's success. Right. When they get successful, they think, oh, I got this now. Mm -hmm. But then you have to go back and say, why did I start this? Come on, amen. Why did I step out on this? I, I know many people uh, over the years that I've talked to who have told me that God said this to them, and God told them to do this, and God told them to do that, and, and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't think that's God. And, and no, and they know, oh, I just, okay. But every last, and, and this is not an exaggeration, every last one of those persons that I really felt like this is not God, every last one of them, ended up in the gutter where their faith in Jesus Christ was concerned. Mm -hmm. One got strung out on drugs, another one, well, two got strung out on drugs, one of them just went back to sin. All because they thought, but here's the thing, remember, God will never violate his written word. Amen. And a lot of things that they were saying, said, yeah, but you, you know, you talking about doing this, but okay, what about your church home? What about your church family? That wasn't important because, no, oh, God called me to do this thing. But no, God never called you something that, leave to, 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 that will leave you without a shepherd mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and will leave you without accountability. 
And I tell everybody, you need a church family. Say that now. Amen. Church family keep you grounded. Because, see, the word will blow up your head. <laughs> your family will keep you small. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they remind, oh, I know you, I know you, RG out there, but in here, you just little Ray Ray. <laughs> right? You, and you need people in your life who don't get caught up in the hype of what the world sees in you. You need people who will come back and keep you grounded, praise God. Mm. So what are these three things? What has God said? What has God said is the purpose, goal, or promise? The, the intent of purpose, this is, is obedience. God's going to tell you something to do, and he wants to see, will you be obedient to it? That's the first thing. The goal, the goal is developing your trust in him. It's called the process. Why did Israel die in the wilderness? Because they lost sight of they, they left sight of the goal, the intent. And they and they, they quit in the wilderness. They died in the wilderness. Because why? They couldn't, they couldn't handle the process because they kept forgetting the promise. See, the goal, your your goal should always be is be in whatever God tells you to develop your trust in Him. Because you're going to need to trust Him. Because I'm telling you, whatever God calls you to do, you're going to have some high days. And you will have some low days. <laughs> you will have some days when things go well, and you have some days when things go wrong. And you're going to need God. Amen. You need to say, Lord, no matter what it looks like, I know what you originally said to me, and I'm trusting you to get me through the process. That's my goal, to trust God. See, what, what, what is, why, why, is, why is it not succeeding? Why is it not just fulfilling this thing? Why is it just trusting? Because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll do what? Direct your path. So, so you, you are, the process is always to reveal to you your lack of trust in him. <laughs> Come on, you bad. That's when, that's, when you re, that's when you really know you, when you have to wait and trust God. When you don't see how it's going to happen, even though you've got his word on it. Amen. All right, the, the third one is, uh, the third part of this is the promise. The promise is the reward or the or benefit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. This is everything we are called to do is ultimately for the benefit of God's kingdom and God's glory. That's why I say, you know, one of one I said in the leadership me, I said, but one of the, the one of the problems I see in a lot of Christians today is that they're trying to be famous. And they're trying to be rock stars in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. To and here you Ray Ray. I don't care what you do out there. I don't care how the mustard work. When I meet you, I don't want your autograph. Come on. Not unless you write me an autograph with a, for a million dollar check with my name on it. But I, I don't want your autograph. That's not. I can value and appreciate your gift. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about belittling somebody or like I don't need. No, I'm not that. But I mean, I, 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 you're just you're still having to walk out your walk just like I am. And, and though I can appreciate your gift and your talent and your abilities. I still have to be mindful. You're still just a man. Because what happens with people when, when somebody, if some Christian in the spotlight fall? It messes them up. You know why it messes them up? Because you put too much confidence in them. They're, they're, you had them on a pedestal that only Jesus belongs on. Listen, men are never your measurement. The only measurement we have is Jesus Christ. He, he is our standard. Nobody, everybody else down here working it out. But Jesus is our standard, praise God. Amen. And don't, because, because I've, seen, I've seen people quit church because, they, because their pastor failed. Mm -hmm. You know, I love my pastor. I, I really do. But I made my mind a long time ago, no matter what he does, that doesn't affect my relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. If he fall, I'll pray for him and do everything in my power to help restore him. But my faith in Jesus Christ, that, that is not shakable because he messes up. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, you, and you should never have people on pedestals like that. Like, oh my God, I couldn't believe they did that. Really? Please, please, they please. live in the flesh just like you do. And if they, they head get too big, the flesh go kick in and run their lives. And they'll run them right to the ground. All right? So, so remember, everything we are called to do is ultimately for the benefit of God's kingdom and God's glory. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says this. Everything you say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Mm -hmm. See, he, in other words, everything you do, you always have to have Jesus out at the forefront because he, no matter how famous you get to the world, you will always need Jesus to follow because he'll keep you in line. Mm -hmm. 
We all need that. It is, we all need that. I need that. You know, as a pastor, I need that. Because, you know, as a pastor, you know, there, there are times when you get benefits because you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. Like, I go to certain places, oh, you're a pastor, oh, please come sit down here. And you can, and you can get the big head over there, praise the Lord, yes, I'm a pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got you to check yourself to do it. You got to check yourself, hold up. You know, I said, well, thank you. Now, I'm, I'm not graciously accepted, but I'm saying, I'm having this inner conversation with my flesh. We will not be exalted. The only reason we are in the position we're in is because of the grace and favor of God. And don't ever, flesh, don't ever forget it. Because your flesh will real quickly forget it. Amen? Does anybody got any questions? Y'all good? Y'all with me? Still in the boat? All right. So tonight, let's look at the faith of Abraham. Praise God. We'll look at the faith of Abraham. Faith activated. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, starting at verse number, uh, verse number 8. You got a paper, son? Oh, you got one. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, it says, Faith led Abraham to obey God when God called him to go to a place that he would receive as an inheritance. Notice something here. God calls him, and God tells him the benefit. God calls him and tells him the benefit. I have an inheritance for you. Amen. See, God, listen, God never calls you to something without a benefit. When people tell me God called him to do something, I say, okay, what, what was the intent? What was the purpose? Jesus, when Jesus showed up, he knew what his purpose was. And he knew that was to give his life as a ransom for us, for our sins. He who knew no sin became our sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. In Christ. He knew what his purpose was. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knew what the promise was. He knew that if I give my life, then, then, then this will bring many sons and daughters to the Father. He knew that. Why do you do what you do? Because if you ever forget why you do what you do, you will stray. And you have, to, you have to remember, I do this for one reason, for one reason only, and that is to glorify him. Amen. I, I, don't, listen, I, I tell people that I do not care if you remember my name as long as you remember my Lord. Amen. See, there was a time when people didn't remember I would get offended by. <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> it's true. You know, but, but I had to grow up. And I had to grow up and say, you know what, no, it's not about you. It's about him. I don't care if you remember me. I just want you to remember the one I represent. Because I can't save you. <laughs> Only he can do that, praise right. God. And, and, I, and, I, and I knew I was growing because one day a, a guy came to me and said, man, I, I heard this word. It so blessed me. And, you know, man, I, I've always remembered it. And he was telling me this word. And it was the word I gave him some years ago. And, and that flesh wanted to rise up and say, well, I'm the one that gave you that. <laughs> no, my flesh wanted to do that because your flesh always wants to. Self-gratification. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I kicked the flesh back. I said, I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, that's a really good word. I said, man, you keep sharing that with people. I'm sure it'll bless a lot of people. I said, Amen. Flesh like, why you, why you do that? Mm. <laughs> we could have felt good. <laughs> but but we, we would have lost the glory. Mm -hmm. And it would have taken away the glory from him. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. I'm at Bible study, people. Quit calling me. <laughs> Amen. We're on Facebook Live, so that's why it's on. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, look at it, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 9. Oh, no, verse 8. He said, Faith led Abraham to obey God when God called him to go to a place that he would receive as an inheritance. Abraham left his own country without knowing where he was going. That's process right there. Remember what I said about process? It's going to reveal you. He went out. Could you, could you step out on something and not know where you was going? Even though God said, I'm going to do this, but he, but he doesn't tell you where to go. Mm -hmm. Just tell you, stop walking. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine leaving your house and just stop walking? Because God said so. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like it was just Abraham. Abraham, wife, <laughs> servants. Where are we going? I don't know, just keep walking. That way. That's where the wind is blowing. I mean, he, just, he didn't know where he was going. He just moved. He, just he left out and just stopped moving in a direction, trusting that God could come. Can we do that? Yeah. Can you, but, can you, but see, here's the thing. That process is going to reveal you. How, how, how will you and I ever know that God is trustworthy? If we don't give him the opportunity 
to show us that he is trustworthy. Which means you got to step out into some unknown because he said so. <laughs> and trust that in your next step you take, that what looks like water, you'll find there's stone beneath it. Can you do it? We all have to ask ourselves that. Can we, can we do that? I have to ask myself that. Can I do that? Can I step out on what he said and just by faith do it? Um, you know, I remember when we uh, was, when the Lord took, I was over there and the Lord spoke to me to rent the other side out. And, uh, well, rent this side, actually. I was over there and he told me to rent this side. And my, the first thing my mind ran to was money. You know, that's going to, mm, let me see, that's going to double our cost expenses. That's going to do this. And, and I had to shut myself down. Mm. I said, hold up. I said, okay. He said, call the landlord. I said, okay, well, I'll call him now. God said, no, call him now. Mm. I said, okay. So I called it, you know, and left, no, called him and told him I didn't know what I wanted to do and left him a message. And, and listen to this. The guy that does the electric work, uh, what's his name? Terry. Terry. He called me at home. Out of the blue. Terry's ne Terry, has, Terry has never called me. He said, Pastor Dunn, yeah, you know how Terry talk. I'll talk real fast. He said, Pastor Dunn, you know, uh, man, man, it's good that you called him. Because, man, the, the people up front, man, were just about to get that place. Man, you beat them. You beat them like about a couple of hours. <laughs> now, what if I had just waited? <laughs> I would have been too late. But because I obeyed, listen, not only did I hear his voice, but I obeyed his timing. And he, and so said we, the, he said the magic word, now. Yeah, I'm now. Now, no, call him now. Yeah. See, and, and sometimes we don't do now. We want to ponder it. God said, give an offering. We go, oh, now. We, well, let me think about it. Mm -hmm. I got to go think about my bills. No, he, just, he already know all about your bills. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Brother Larry. Do you ever wrestle with the, with the thing you say that you, you hear in him? Do you ever wrestle with the idea how you know you're not hearing you? Is that oh I do. Mm -hmm. And you know, and here's the thing. There have been many times for many years that I, I've uh, <laughs> I thought it was God and end up being me. But how do I learn somebody's voice mm -hmm. through experience? So here's my thing with walking with God. Don't be afraid to fail. Because you are gonna fail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because isn't that's a fear of because we want to do every because I'm like this. I want to do everything right. But he said, but he said, he said, don't be afraid to fail. Here's why. Here's what the Lord told me a long time ago. He said, here's what makes for an, an acceptable miss. It's when you miss it, believing in your heart mm -hmm. that you really was obeying God. God said, I got that covered. I got that covered. Praise. He'll cover that. Because in your heart, you really believe it's what he said. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, when you find out that you're wrong, have enough love towards him that you stop what you're doing. And regardless of what people may say to you, turn around and go in the opposite direction if he tells you to. Like, oh, you're moving in the wrong direction. It's, listen, it's okay, uh, it's okay to get on course if you're open to hear his voice to get you back on course. A lot of people, here's the pride says, even if I'm moving in the wrong direction, I'm not going to turn around because what are people going to think about me? Mm -hmm. And you can't worry about what people are going to think about you. You, you, know, you know, there have been times when, I, when I've wanted to do something decent, that Pat, you might want to think about this. You know, and when he said it, it struck my spirit. Like, you know, yeah, Deke, let's go with that. But, I, but it's okay. Because why? Because you're still living in flesh that's tainted by sin. Yeah. And you see light through a dirty glass. For example, <laughs> and you don't always have the clear view. And it's okay to miss it when you believe you're really doing the right thing. But just always be willing to turn around. Oh, Come, amen. Isn't that why it's, it's dangerous that when you, when you think you've heard something, you find out it is wrong, you done told so many people. You should be quiet and just kind of do it. And That's then, true. you know, then you won't have that <laughs> thing in your, you know, the devil won't put in your head, oh, now you got to, you know, what are they going to think? Well, if you hadn't told 20,000 people before you <laughs> attempted to That's do true. it. Sometimes we got to, and that's good you, you know? said that, because sometimes where faith is going, we got to pray things through. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you got to wait for the details. Just because God, see, sometimes God can say something, and he's not really through talking, but we get so excited about what he just said, we off to the races. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hold on, I have more to say to you, but you go. So sometimes you got to stop and say, okay, Lord, is there, is there more that I need to know? Is there something I need to do? And you got to give it, give it, give it time. Again, this is, all this is a character development. It's teaching you how to wait. It's teaching you how to be patient. Uh, it's revealing all these things to you. You're going to miss it a whole lot starting yes. now. You just are. Because you're learning him. Amen. Amen. But, but miss it because you believe you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Don't miss it because you're doing Now, if you absolutely know it's wrong, yeah, you just need to stop. Mm -hmm. 
but, but but there have been many things I've done that I thought it was the right thing to do, and and got into it and found it was the wrong thing, and I had to I had to tell people I can't do that. You know, I can't. You know, I've I've I've, I've had times when I've been invited to go places, and I'm like, yeah, I can pray so I go, and then the Holy Ghost comes, no, you don't need to go. Like, oh, okay. So I had to call him back and say, well, I know the, the, I, the Lord said I can't come. I, I said, but I believe God has somebody else for you for this. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and there have been times when I've gone when I wasn't supposed to go, and it was dead. I mean, the message was dead. The delivery was dead. It was like trying to trying to talk through sand. It was just, it was not good at all. Annoying wasn't annoying. Yeah, it wasn't annoying because he, I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. So, so I, again, I learned through missing it, you know. And but you know, grace is present to help you know. You, Lord, I missed it. Okay, let's pick yourself up and let's keep moving. You know, He's not going to bash you in the head and beat you down about it. He's going to keep moving. Amen. So anyway, let's get back to Abraham. Because boy, my time is almost done already. Um, it says, "So Abraham left his own country without knowing where he was going." Verse nine: Faith led Abraham to live as a foreigner in the country that God had promised him. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who received the same promise from God. Now think about that. He was comfortable, he was comfortable in his father's house. Now, and I'm sure his wife was comfortable in their daddy's house. And I'm sure the servants were comfortable in the house. But now you're out here in tents. And you gotta understand when the wind's blowing, it's kicking up dirt. <laughs> it's blowing through all your tents. It, it, it's not, it's, you know, the, the thought, it's very easy to enter the thought like Israel, why you bring us out here? Mm -hmm. We were more comfortable at home. See, that's nothing the process does. It reveals, are you willing to be committed when all your comforts are gone? Mm -hmm. When all your security blankets are gone, are you, are, can you be comfortable? <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you just trust God in the midst of the sand, when the sand's blowing out in your food? <laughs> mm -hmm. Being content with your heart. Yeah, being content. Mm -hmm. Can you do it? Because this is, this, is this, is, this is what the process of faith is all about. It's about character development. In fact, at this point, his name was not Abraham. It was still Abram. Come on, amen. See, God, God ain't, what God's saying, look, if I, if, if I change your name too soon, you'll resist it. But when you've been through some things with me and you have seen my faithfulness, when I change your name, you'll say, yes, Lord. That's why Jesus changed all the names of the disciples. Changed all their names. Listen, he changed their names to reflect their future. Mm -hmm. Simon was called Peter. Peter means rock. The same dude that betrayed him, that, that, that denied him three times. Mm -hmm. But see, Jesus saw Peter beyond that moment Amen. of denial. Amen. And he says, when you come to yourself, he knew, see, he knew one day Peter was going to be the rock that he named him. But there was a process that Peter went through mm -hmm. to become what he was called to, called to be. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, God's calling you something today. All right. Amen. He's renamed you. That's why I say you're not from Africa. He's renamed you. <laughs> Say that. You're not a sinner anymore. He's renamed you. He has called you the righteousness of God in Christ amen. Jesus. He's called you a royal priest. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. He called you a special person. There's nothing ordinary about you. Everything about you is extraordinary in the presence of God. Amen. See, he, he, he changed your name. I remember when I, when I came to the Lord, and my nickname was Weesey. Yeah, I Do you remember that? When they called yeah. me Weesey. And, um, and, and, and the reason why my mom called me Weesey, she said, because she said, when I came out, I was so small like a little weasel. Well, that's, that's a really, you know, not a compliment. <laughs> but one day, somebody called me Weesey. And, man, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, take your name back. Mm. He told me to take my name back, which is Donald. You know what Donald actually means? Mm. The name Donald actually means leader. Wow. Ain't that amazing? Mm. So for a whole lot of years, I was living like a weasel. But when God had named me originally, I was supposed to be a leader. Wow. Took my name. That's why I tell people, quit, quit naming all these little nicknames and stuff. They, give on. your children names that mean something. Come on. Amen. You know, God named my son. He told me to name him Manasseh. I didn't even know what Manasseh meant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, then my father-in-law was named John. So we made Manasseh his middle name. So, mm -hmm. But John means Yahweh is gracious. Mm -hmm. Manasseh means one who makes you forget the troubles of your past. Mm -hmm. 
So God, his name together means God is gracious in that he has given us one who makes us forget the troubles of our past. And know what the Lord said to me about him? He said he will cause many people to forget the troubles of their past. No pressure, son, no pressure. Just be a little boy. I mean, just be a little boy. I mean, because remember, Peter, Simon didn't start out as Peter. Come on, man. Simon didn't act like Peter either. <laughs> Simon became Peter after, down the road. But it was three and a half, four, three and a half years later before he really started walking like Peter. It means a rock, being solid. Because before that boy was shaky. Impulsive. Even after Jesus died, the boy went back to fishing. Impulsive. Come on, man. Yeah, impulsive. <laughs> all that stuff. All that stuff that he was. But he became what he was named. Amen. So, so take your name back. You are the righteousness of God. Don't, don't let people tell you you're a sinner or nothing like that. That's foolishness. Mm -hmm. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a royal priesthood, a peculiar special people. Amen. All right. I ain't been this time. It's flying, y'all. Y'all quit playing my clock. <laughs> this verse 10 says, Abraham was waiting for the city that God had designed and built. The city with permanent foundations. Faith, mm -hmm. Listen, faith enabled Abraham to become a father even though he was old and Sarah had never been able to have children. Abraham trusted that God would keep his promise. Now, now notice he, he's Abraham. But when he was Abram, mm -hmm. oh, when God said you will have a child, guess what they did? <laughs> Come on. The Bible says, actually, Abram fell down in the dirt and laughed, rolled around, laughed so hard. Mm -hmm. Sarah was in the tent, and she was in a chuckling to her, and the angel said, what you, what you laughing, man? <laughs> oh, I was, oh, yeah, you was. <laughs> But then God, listen, so then God changed their names. I thought it was just Sarah, so it was him too. Oh, he laughed, he laughed in the dirt. He fell down in the dirt, rolling around laughing at the fact that he, was, he, he thought it was hysterical. Come on, amen. All right, let me keep reading because, boy, my time is almost up. And this is verse, um, verse 12. Abram was, Abram was as good as dead. In other words, his man thing wasn't working no more. This is, I mean, this. That's what I mean. He was good and dead. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't nothing functioning. Yet from this man came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the grain of sand on the seashore. Because mm -hmm. it's not just, a, it's not just a, the, 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 the Jewish people that belong to him. Mm -hmm. It's all of us too. That's right. That's right. If you be Christ, mm -hmm. then are you Abraham sees and heirs according That's to right. the promise. Do you know that land of it isn't just belong to the Israel? The, the right. Jewish people. That's right. It belongs to us too, as born again right. believers. Why? Because Jesus. Well, guess where Jesus is returning to? Mm -hmm. That land. Mm -hmm. And if he, if we are one with Him, That's right. and we've been made a joint heir with Him, then whatever He owns, we mm -hmm. own too. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just the Jewish people; it was also all of us as believers. Mm -hmm. That land is just as much ours as theirs. <laughs> Come on, Amen. If not more so, we because we obey God. But, but see, his faith got him through the process. Of, he, he had to say, at some point, he had to say, I believe God. And when he believed God, his body started working again. And he looked at Sarah and got a little twinkle in his eye. Praise God. And apparently she did too. And they conceived. They was 100 years old and nanny. And they conceived and gave birth to a child. Mm -hmm. Now, if God can do that, if he can resurrect them, what do you think he can do for you? There's nothing he can't do for you. The only thing he needs you to do is he needs you to have faith in it. <laughs> to believe what he said. And, this, and don't let the process keep you from standing mm -hmm. and believing till the promise manifests. Mm -hmm. Alright, verse 17. He says, when God tested Abraham, faith led him to offer his son Isaac. Now, ain't that, now, ain't that, now think about it. So, Abraham is waiting for this promise that's going to come through his son. He's got one, Isaac. Isaac was a son of promise. And now God is asking him, now I want you to take him up and I want you to sacrifice him to me. Okay, wait a minute, hold up. This is the boy that through, that I'm going to get all these generations of people. But if I kill him, well, there go that dream. <laughs> But Abraham, did, did he, did, but Abraham didn't do that. Look what it says. When, when God tested Abraham, faith led him to offer up his son Isaac. So Abraham took him up. And, and can you imagine being Isaac, though? Mm -hmm. 
My father, behold the fire. My father, behold the wood. But my father, where's the sacrifice? What does Abraham say? God will provide for himself a sacrifice. He could have said, you it, boy. <laughs> he could have said that to him. You it. And look what, it's, look, look what it says here. It says, Abram, the one who received the promise from God, was willing to offer his only son as a sacrifice. God has said to him, through Isaac, your descendants will carry on your name. Okay, it, and you want me to kill him. That ain't making much sense. So, so let me tell you something about faith. God's going to ask you to do stuff that don't make no sense. <laughs> and you might as well get ready. He's going to ask you to do stuff that's going against reason, rhyme and reason. It's just not going to register with your brain. But your faith does not operate by your mind. It operates by his word. That's right. a amen. This verse 19 says, this, Abraham believed that God could bring Isaac back from the dead. Abram did did receive Isaac back from the dead in a figurative sense. In other words, in Abraham's mind, that boy, when God said kill him, in Abraham's mind, and in Abraham's heart, that boy was dead. Because him raising the knife was a prelude to what he had already seen in his heart. This boy's going to die. But here's what he knew about covenant. If I kill him, and he is the promise, mm -hmm. it is God's responsibility as my covenant partner to bring him back to life. Had they ever seen that before? I don't think Abraham ever seen that before. We don't find it in his history anywhere. We saw, but he, but he understood covenant. See, co see, covenant means. Here's what covenant meant. Covenant meant. Okay, if I ask you to sacrifice a cow, and you sacrifice a cow because we're in covenant. Because I'm in covenant with you, not only am I responsible as your covenant brother to offer up a cow, but I'm also responsible to take what you did one step farther. Now, th this is really prophetic of Jesus. Because God asked Isaac to offer up his only son. But he let him keep him. But God offered up his own, only son and let him die. Why? Because he had, a, he had to honor the covenant he had with Abraham. Amen. He couldn't stop his son from that. See, he had to do this. In a, he couldn't send Jesus into the world illegally. He had to have a son legally, and he had to sacrifice him legally. God, even though Abraham was, was long past dead, God still had a responsibility to honor the covenant he had with Abraham. So he also had to have a son. And he also had to offer him up. But he couldn't just stop with his hand held high. He had to let the knife fall. Because that's what covenant required. A covenant is a legal and a moral yeah. uh, contract. Oh, yeah. And, and see, in, in old when you didn't honor your covenant, you see, th there's good parts of the covenant, like, uh, let's say, a warrior and farmer. The farmer says, before I let you go hungry, I'll make sure, you know, I'll feed you before I feed my own family. And the warrior says, you know, before I let anybody come here and, and take you over, I will come and fight and give my life to defend you. That's the good part. The bad part, if, if the warrior said, if you did honor the covenant of feeding my family, I will hunt you down and all your generations and wipe y'all off the face of the planet. And it would be legal. And it would be legally, and they could legally do it because you dishonored the covenant. So God was not going to dishonor this covenant he made with Abraham. He honored the covenant. So he had a son, his only son. Just like I, Abraham had his only son of promise and was willing to sacrifice him. And God not only willingly, but he did. And he legally had to do it because of the covenant he had with Abraham. Because had he not done it, he would have been in violation of the covenant. Mm -hmm. see, God, see, just because you forget stuff, God don't. He doesn't forget the covenant he made with Abraham. That's why he still honors the land over there, because he honors the covenant he has with Abraham. All right. So listen, verse 19. Verse 19. Abraham believed that God could bring Isaac back from the dead. Abraham did receive Isaac back from the dead in a figure of sin. So he knew that even if I kill you because of, of my covenant, you got to bring him back to life. Because you, you gave me, made me a promise. You said from Isaac with my seed. Because so even if I kill him, you got to do what you promised me. Hmm. And so now Abraham's like, you dead, boy. Don't worry about it. God will bring you back. Because <laughs> he has to. Because I have a covenant with him. Does it say anywhere if Isaac put up a fight? And, and that was a, that, that, no, Isaac didn't put up a fight. You know, he's a good, probably because a teen, he probably could have put up a fight. But so that means Isaac had to trust his father, that his father wasn't losing his mind. Mm -hmm. So there are, I'm just saying it, there are things in gospel where faith is concerned, God's gonna ask you for, it ain't gonna make no sense. 
You want me to give what? That's all I got. God said, I know. I've done that. I have, I have, I have done that over my lifetime where I have, when God says, bless them. That's all I got left. I know that. <laughs> but give it to them. And I did. And every time I did it, God always had something else. I had a ram in the bush for me. Always blessed me. Always just provided for me. I mean, every single, I mean, did I say every? I mean, I mean every single time. He has always come through in some way. But he never came through the way I thought he would. He always came in a way that, was, that I did not expect. All right. Look, here, here are the steps of faith Abraham took. I'm going to look at these real quick. Number one, he left what was familiar. He left what was familiar. Listen, that means he had to leave behind his traditions, his earthly inheritance, because he had to leave his father's house. He left his culture behind. He left friends and family. And he left his religion. He had to leave all that behind to go after God's promise. There are a lot of things that, you know, listen, there are a lot of things that God's going to ask you to leave behind for his will. There's religions, religious stuff he's going to ask you to leave behind for traditional things that you think. He said, I need you to leave that behind for where I want to take you. You have to leave it behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started studying identification, I had to leave a lot of stuff behind. In fact, I really be honest, I had to leave everything behind. To be real honest with you. Everything that I, everything that I thought I knew, I had to leave it behind so that I could really learn who I was in him. And he told me a long time ago, he said, Donald, he said, he said, you must empty yourself of yourself and allow me to fill you up. So that means everything I was, I had to let it go. Couldn't be black and proud anymore. Couldn't be, you know, all this other stuff that I was carrying around. Couldn't be what I, I couldn't be we see no more. I could, you know, I couldn't be this child with this kid with, with, with a poor self image, poor self. I had to leave all that behind and empty myself of myself and say, God, you got to fill me up. Now, I'm still emptying myself. I'm thinking I've arrived. I'm still emptying myself of stuff. But, but, I, but I'm, I'm purposefully saying, you know, I need to get rid of this so I can let you make more room for you in my life. All right. Amen. Because faith, faith requires it. But you're going to have to leave behind a lot of your traditions, a lot of your earthly inheritance. Listen, God will tell you to, but Lord, you know, that, that's my money. I know, but just leave it with him. Let it go. Don't argue about it. Mm. But it's mine by right. Yeah, I know, but just let it go. It doesn't make sense to us. I don't understand. Well, you, you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. See, but there are things he'll ask you to leave behind, to let go. Because he, but, but here's the thing, he never calls you to let something go without the intent of having something, without the intent of having something better for you down the road. Amen. You have to believe that, that God's got something better for me. Number two, uh, he lived as a foreigner in the country the Lord led him to. This is, he refused to attach himself to anything that was not the manifestation of the promise. He wore the world as a loose garment. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He wore the world as a loose garment. That's why he stayed in tents. That's why he didn't go build a house somewhere. Because he knew he was still moving. And until he found the place where God wanted him to be, and God hadn't said that was the place, he kept moving. And, re and here's the funny thing. The reason why he couldn't see the place, that, the land that he was in was the promise, is because he took Lot with him. And Lot was family. And, and so Lot was hindering the whole program. See, people say, well, four out of five ain't bad. No, four out of five is disobedience. <laughs> You got to look at it. Four out of five was not, no, it, it, it's disobedience. And, and, and the Bible says they broke out a, a strife between the herdmen of Lot and the herdmen of Abraham. And so he, he, they, had to, they had to part ways. Yes, sir. What do you mean, where is a loose garment? Where the word, meaning, meaning there's nothing in your life that you shouldn't be able to let go of for the will of God. Shake it off. You just let it go. Like if God said, deal this, you just let it go. Well, I, I really like that coat. Hey, he know you like that coat. He might have a better one for you. Mm. And if he does have a better one for you, Obedience is better than sacrifice because your disobedience go cost you something. It will. It will cost you something. And so, you know, it's just good to obey God. But, but, but he will never, but here's the thing you got to remember, he will never forget your labors of love. And you remember, we live this life to live again. This is not all of life there is. And he'll, he'll bless you even in this life. Because there's a lot of people that got a lot of stuff, but they have no peace. No. But you can, have, you can have less, but have peace in your life. Mm -hmm. You don't have drama and all the craziness that people... I mean, that's a blessing. Come, Come on, man. Come on. To be able to lay down at night not worry about, you know, mm -hmm. any, any issue. Because you know God got you. Mm -hmm. Listen, 
So stuff ain't gonna make you happy. Stuff ain't gonna satisfy people. See, that's the lie. The end. You get you be happy. You get stuck. Get more money. You be happy. You better take that vacation ever you want to. You'll be happy. No, you won't. Not really. It won't last. It's very. It's temporary. It's fleeting. Mm -hmm. The happiest place I ever found in my life was just being in the will of God. Just doing what I'm called to do. Amen. So, so he see he he he. he he refused to attach himself to anything that was not the manifestation of the promise. You know how many people get halfway to something and they like it so much that they stop moving forward in God? Mm. They become complacent and content or satisfied with where they are. They just, you know, they stop moving. Well, this, this is good enough for me. It's the, this is good enough for me. But it's not, but see, now you're living for you. It's not what God wants to do in you. Come on now, that's how Israel was in the wilderness. This is good enough for us. We should just stay in Egypt. Well, we ate leeks and onions free. No, you didn't. That. You were slaves. You were being beat. It's amazing how it's amazing how the see, it's amazing how the process reveals your heart. God said, "Y'all ain't even with me." He said, seven times they disobeyed." He said, "How long am I put with these people?" He said, "Let me just wipe them out, Moses, and I'll start off with you." <laughs> Moses, now you can't do that, God. <laughs> Moses, stood, Moses, Moses really became like Christ to them. Mm -hmm. He stood in the gap. God mm -hmm. says, I'm going to wipe out God. Moses, no, if, you, if, you block, if you wipe them out, you're going to take my name out of your book of life. God says, oh, okay, never mind. I won't do it then. <laughs> change my mind. Change God's mind. You know you can always change God's mind when it's a call for grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that you find in the Bible. Whenever God changed his mind, it was because somebody stood in the gap and said, Lord, that's have mercy. Abraham, Abram did when, when God was going to go so, destroy Sodom. He said, you go destroy the righteous with the unrighteous? He said, if you find 20, will you spread the seed? He said, okay, uh, Abram, if I find 20, I'll spread it. He said, well, he got down to five. You find five in the city, five <laughs> righteous, will you spread He said, if I find five, I'll spread the seed. Couldn't even find five. Mm -hmm. he, I think he could have got it down to one. But he stopped at five. If you find five, will you spread the city? Yeah, if I find five. Couldn't even find five. Found four. Lot, his two daughters, and his wife. And, she, and the wife didn't make it because her heart was still in Sodom. So even when he brought her out, she looked back and turned and suffered the same fate as Sodom. Mm -hmm. All right. We're talking about Abraham. Number three. Number three, uh, he became a father when he was past the age of having children. But everything stopped working. You know, 100, year, 100 years old, no, ain't much working. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But, but God, come on, amen. But God. He believed, he believed God. And I'm telling you, so let me say this, as long as there is breath in your body, it is never too late to serve God. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm too old. No, you're not. You're still breathing. You're not too old. There's something you can do for the kingdom. Amen. Oh, I'm too young. No, nope, you're not too young. God can use you right where you are. If you just let it, he'll use you. Amen? Amen. And number four, he was willing to sacrifice that which meant the most to him, mm -hmm. which was Isaac. See, what, are you willing to sacrifice what means, what, what's really important to you mm -hmm. for its will? You know, you, 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 again, these are things to ponder. I'm not asking you to answer it. So I'm like, yeah, I want you lying because you don't know what that thing is yet. I mean, that's the truth. You don't know what it is yet. You know, and, and, but you have to ask, you know, am I willing to give up the thing that I, I want the most mm -hmm. for his will? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus did. Lord, if it's all possible, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to be separated from the Father. He had never been, he had never been separated from the Say Father. Say that. Say that. He didn't want to go through ending the pain and the agony of the cross, taking on all our sins, past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So he was willing to sacrifice that which meant the most to him, and that was Isaac. In fact, in his heart, he killed him. Amen. And now here's the last verse I'm going to give you. Galatians 3.29. If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's descendants and heirs as God promised. Amen. Remember that Jesus made of Jew and Gentile, he made one new man. Amen. So that means whatever he promised Abraham, you can say me too. So if he promised that land to Abraham and his descendants, you ought to be saying me too. Because it belongs to me as well. Amen. Come on, amen. So when Jesus set it all up, guess what? Me too. <laughs> amen. <laughs> all right. Praise God. So I pray that bless you. Anybody have any questions, comments? Y'all good? Answer all your questions for you. If I didn't, write them down and bring them next week and we'll still be on faith. So, amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word tonight, Lord. And 
we just pray for your people that uh, that they will uh, allow their faith to be strengthened, even as they go through the process. I thank you, Father God, that that process will develop their character, Father, that they'll learn to trust and depend and rely upon you. We thank you, Father God, that in everything that you call them to do, that, that the purpose will be clearly seen in their eyes, O oh God, and in their hearts, that they will not quit. So we praise you, Father God, for that, for strengthening our faith in those areas that we struggle in. We just thank you for the grace to help us to be better, yes, Father God, and even reveal those things to us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we know that we never leave your presence, for you said you never leave us, and that, Father, you would never forsake us. We thank you, Father God, that each of us will arrive at our destination safely without incident, and we just give you praise, mm -hmm. and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.